Welcome back to my garage. Last time you saw me, which is uh, a little while now, and especially last time you saw this setup. Been a while, I'm sorry about that. Last time you saw me testing the mechanical, electromechanical continuous fuel injection system and kind of failing. We need a return line and uh, I was talking about making a barrel valve. I think I'm gonna make something kind of like the barrel valve you see in mechanical injection, but uh, I'm gonna modify, I'll show you a carb to give me a kind of a sh shut off, shut offable return thing in that carb. And so a high pressure mechanical injection carb, much higher pressure than uh, like really high pressure like this setup. The reason it's been a while and the reason things are going slowly and it's been like this for like, well, almost two years now is, um, well, it's just some issues and um, I'm, I won't go into it. It's just, it's, it seems like sometimes I just get like stun locked and I can't do anything. Like there's a shackle holding me back from anything. And it's not about this. I love doing this. It's uh, like other stuff that just, it just has such a huge effect on everything for me. And, uh, but I'm working on it and I'm getting help working on it. So just stay with me and uh, we'll be back in prime, hopefully soon. <laughs> The carb we're gonna modify for this is our beloved Speedway carb. Here's that barrel valve I showed you last time with the inlet, the outlet and the return here. And, uh, and this valve with the return hole to here and then a slit for, uh, for metering. So that's pretty much how the, uh, the barrel valves or uh, drum valves, I'm not quite sure what they call them in mechanical injection. I think it's barrel valve. The internals of uh, this carb so this is another one taken apart. So first you can see the, so this is the inlet of this carb here. And there's a, there's a valve here so you can shut it off. Cause if you don't, it just leaks constantly. Like it'll drain your tank. And here's the discharge pocket. And that discharge pocket is actually kind of shrouded by this piece, which means I, hopefully that'll, and it's at an angle, so hopefully that'll help atomize the fuel. Hopefully this will just like, a high pressure jet will just hit the casting here and like disperse or well, hopefully like smash it, smash the droplets and uh, create a fine mist, we'll see. Inside of this, there's this simple mechanism where uh, there's a plunger and this thing, so that's the outlet. This doesn't really meter at all. It's pretty much just an on off switch. And, uh, and this is moved by this lever here. Anyway, this doesn't matter. My plan now is to make a new one of these from a piece of bar stock. I'm gonna modify this so that the plunger is actually a shut off for the return. So we'll have to make a new slide. I'll show you how the slide looks in this car, but we'll have to make a new slide that doesn't open this as the slide is open, but actually closes it. We can't have this large discharge hole because we want to run high pressure. So we're gonna make a new one and drill a tiny hole here. I'm trying to keep this reversible. So the only modification to the, to the current car part will be a hole here, which can be plugged. And we'll have to plug this hole, and, uh, but that's reversible. Okay, let's get to work. That's surprisingly not grabby to be brass. Maybe this is some kind of a weird alloy. I'm not sure what alloy it is. This is what I could find semi-locally. My super nice Mitutoyo micrometer is uh, out of juice and, I'm, uh, and I don't have spare batteries for it. So I'll have to go get that later today. Now we'll have to settle for, uh, for this not super nice at all cheap micrometer to measure this. So we're sitting uh, about 0.0, .0 two millimeters too large. I'm gonna do the rest with some uh, sandpaper.
0.005 millimeters under the dimension from this. So uh, this should slip into the carb, let's check. And it does, perfect. Now a reamer would have been nice, but I don't have the luxury of a reamer, a four millimeter reamer. So, uh, but this will be good enough. It'll be good enough. You might think the reason I'm in these clothes is because I'm actually editing and not doing stuff out here at the moment. But that's not the case. The case is that this is my go-to learning shirt. And the reason I'm in my go-to learning shirt is because this video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming and AI. If there's anything I enjoy, it's learning by doing. Though many of you will probably think, well, all you do is uh, not learning by failing. And that's true to an extent. But seriously, learning is what I'm here for. That's the main goal. Well, actually having fun, but learning is having fun for me. Nerd. Hands-on problem solving has proven to be much more efficient than just watching lecture videos. It certainly is for me. It kinda engages a wider part of me, wider part of my brain or body, and just makes it easier to pick stuff up and, and have it stick. Something super important, Brilliant focuses on building critical thinking skills, not memorizing. And this is key, cause critical thinking skills makes you better at everything. It bleeds over from one thing to everything else. You get better at seeing solutions to problems and uh, better at thinking outside of the box. With Brilliant you can learn a little bit every day, even if out traveling. It's great for both personal and professional growth. It's the opposite of doom scrolling. So actually a really good mental health booster too, because you're actually doing something useful versus just wasting time. Turn your curiosity into comprehension with math, programming, data and AI courses designed to build real skill and develop your intuition. I just love the transition from curiosity to comprehension, like when I built my or modified my CNC mill, where the, like the rat's nest of wires back there and all the components and everything and I had no clue, like an adventure. And then slowly, well actually not that slowly, but then like comprehension, where I, where it was familiar, like a familiar world to me and I knew what everything was and where everything was, even though it still was a rat's nest. So comprehension, I like the transition from curiosity to comprehension, that's, I like that. Build and use formulas to solve problems in business and everyday life. Peek under the hood of large language models like ChatGPT to understand the concepts powering today's technology. Apply data skills to real world scenarios, like running simulations to predict the winner of the World Cup. Even better, apply data skills to run simulations and predict the world's most powerful two-stroke. <laughs> Hopefully. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash two-stroke or use the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you, Brilliant. <laughs> Now we want to turn this down to get a snug fit in here. I need room for threads on the end. I also want it longer than, uh, than this because I might want to have a little taper there to have some, uh, a little bit of control over the bleed, not just on off, uh, return, not bleed, but return to the tank. So I want this to be a slight bit longer probably. actually a little bit too small. I want this to be able to almost shut the return off completely, like there will always be a little bit of leakage because of the clearance, but uh, so I'll make it a little bit bigger. It's a little tight there, but that can be where we put the thread.
So the old part has the fuel coming in from here. And then there's this uh, plunger opening up fuel coming in from here and opening the slit here, letting fuel go through and into the Venturi or into the Airstream. And that's, we're going to do it reversed. That means we'll have to put some, some other features into this. First of all, we'll need a tiny little hole. That'll be the discharge hole. Like that. And uh, smack in the middle here. That's our discharge location. So that's our first thing. The other thing is how we're going to put an inlet hole here. And we need to bring, so fuel will be coming in there. And that means it has to be a relief cut here. And throttle position control will be metered by a slight little taper here. Closing off the return, which is this now. We've encountered a small problem. I haven't got drill chucks small enough to... Uh, well, they can't grab onto a 0.8mm drill bit. So we'll have... that has to wait until we can get a drill chuck that's, that is able to do that. And so let's focus on making that intake hole. Drilling the intake hole. And that has to be here between where the, the retaining set screw sits and the actual intake, which now is the return. Inlet and outlet. We'll have to put this in first. Otherwise we can't turn this. Now we need to... And first of all, this probably there's probably burrs in there now, so this won't fit anymore. And now we gotta find the location for... Well, first of all, we'll, we gotta find out how long we want this to be. And then we gotta find the location for... The, or how long the taper will have to be. And how long that clearance area will have to be so that we can get fuel from here into the, the piece of tube we made and uh, out the discharge hole in every position of the return taper plunger. We want this plunger to be able to operate through the whole range, which is this motion. So first up, we have to cut this so that it won't butt up against the end of the hole here. And uh, that's about there. And at the end of the travel, this has to, that has to be completely shut off. So to make that absolutely, to be absolutely sure of that, we'll, uh, we'll mark this about there. So you can see how there's not much of a tapered section we're talking about here. Just a short little thing. I ran out of battery on the camera. But uh, this is the finished taper. I think a good solution here would be not to drill a hole here at all, but actually turn a tiny little slit. And so in that way the fuel, the actual, so this will, and then a hole for, just for the return. In that way the, the actual, actual fuel entering the carb is not going through the through this at all, but it's going around into the the discharge area, and uh, and this will just uh, control return. So let's do that. Actually, that's much better. So now that tiny little groove there, that's our nozzle.
So now it's just a matter of making a slide with a cutout here that moves like how we want it to move. So we, like wide open would be this. So this is like wide, this is wide open. Got a test bench set up here now with the fuel pump, the modified carb, and an Arduino controlling everything with this pot meter. This should be sitting in like full return state now. I'm gonna put on some gloves. Let's bring the pump up to speed and see if it uh, if it returns fuel. You can see it's leaking a little bit. That's okay. Now let's see if we can not return fuel. <laughs> it's leaking a lot. Need paper. Oh, it's probably leaking from the return. It didn't seem to do much when I shut off the return. Like it seemed to just, just leak and uh, I didn't see any jet of fuel coming out of here, which might be a problem. Could be some clearance issues and stuff. Let's try that again. I'm gonna turn the pump to low speed and then see where the fuel is coming out with the return blocked. What's coming out here, but not really in a high pressure stream. A couple of things I haven't thought through here, I realize. So first of all, with the tank sitting higher than the carb, the return line will dump fuel into the carb too. So that's a problem. So that's problem number one. It's delivering a little bit of fuel. The most going out to return, I think. And now let's shut it off. And now it is delivering more fuel and not returning it. But definitely not in the in that stream I was looking for. So test one does not seem to be successful. Clearly we'll have to uh, find a better way of uh, well sealing things I think I think the problem here is that fuel can creep out between that needle and uh, and uh, the bushing and also out of the vents here and uh, there's too much unwanted open area too much leak for uh, high pressure to build and squirt out of the tiny little groove I've made here so um, Back to the drawing board. But this is the end of this video. Just to get a video out this week. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, pat on my own back for uh, getting back in business again. I feel like I always get back in business. <laughs> well, onwards and forwards.